Praise be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Greetings to all of you in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. so happy to be with you all once again in this online class given to us by the Marthoma Sunday School Samaj. Let us begin our class with a word of prayer. O Lord, our most gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for the blessed day you've given us to come together as Sunday School to learn more about your word, Lord, as we learn about one more quality that we need to have to inculcate as Christians. Be with us and guide us. Help us to imbibe it and live according to your will. Pray for all the students, teachers, and everybody listening to the video. Be with us and guide us. All of this we ask in the most precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we are at chapter 30 in our online class. To forgive and to forget. To forgive and to forget. That's the title given to our class today. To forgive is uh, quite easy. Though it's difficult, it is easy. But to forget is the main part. Many of us are very good at forgiving, but we don't forget. We hold it in our heart. This is what God is challenging us today through the word of God to forgive and forget. Let me ask you a few questions. How do you feel if somebody in your class uh, does something wrong to you, uh, say something bad to you or fights with you, gets into a hand, hand fight or something like that? What happens? At times we cut off the friendship and then we don't talk to them for a long time. Think about how they come and ask you forgiveness. They ask you sorry and all that. Yeah, we think about uh, there are such incidents in our life, right? Yeah. What about if it's in the reverse role? If, uh, uh, if you are the one who goes and initiates a fight, you fight with your brother, would you go and ask sorry? It's a very difficult thing to think about, right? Yeah. So today, we're going to have uh, something that we read from the Bible. A book from the New Testament. The epistle to Philemon. The whole letter. The epistle to uh, Philemon. There are no chapters, only verses. It's a, it's a beautiful letter. It's not divided into chapters. It's just 25 verses. One of the small letters in the New Testament. It is written by St. Paul himself when he was in the prison. Okay, we all know that there are four prison epistles, right? Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and Philemon. Philemon is what uh, St. Paul wrote. So we'll be reading from that. We'll just read a few verses. I want you to pause the video, go read all 25 verses. I'm just reading it for today's class, but when you're learning it, I want you to pause the video and I want you to read all the 25 uh, verses. If not, you would not understand what we are trying to say. Okay, so let me just read a few verses. I'm going to read uh, from 8 onwards. Therefore, although in Christ I could be bold and order you to do what you ought to do, yet I appeal to you on the basis of love. I then, as Paul, an old man, and now also a prisoner of Christ Jesus, I appeal to you for my son Onesimus, who became my son while I was in chains. Formerly he was useless to you, but now he has become useful for both to you and to me. Chap uh, verses 15. Perhaps the reason he was separated from you for a little while was that you might have him back for good. No longer as a slave, but better than a slave, as a dear brother. So if you consider me a partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. If he has done you any wrong or owes you anything, charge it to me. Charge it to me. I, Paul, am writing this with my own hand. I will pay it back, not to mention that 
you owe me your very self. Such a beautiful letter. Such a beautiful letter which is asking somebody to forgive someone else. Okay, so who are these people we are talking about over here? The key words that are given in our book, let's go through it quickly. The first one is Paul. We know who Paul is. St. Paul who was Saul, who uh, turned to uh, become Paul for Christ. We know his name himself. Uh, the name itself uh, denotes his humility. Second is Timothy. Timothy means honoring God, a close companion and a devoted disciple of Paul, an ardent evangelist of Jesus Christ, somebody, somebody who journeyed with Paul himself. Now, the book attributed to this man is Philemon. Philemon uh, is a Greek name which means affectionate. Uh, we would uh, think how would this uh, name be affectionate if he is not ready to forgive somebody, right? But we will learn what, how, why, it, why his name uh, means affectionate soon. He was a wealthy Christian man uh, in the church of Colos, that is in Rome. Okay, he's probably a convert uh, from a different religion towards following Christ through Paul. Then we have two names, Aphia and Archippus. Uh, we do not have uh, great details about them. We just have the name, uh, the meanings of those names, which means increasing. Um, and Archippus is a fellow worker in Colos with Philemon. Then we see holy people. Holy people means all of us. We are all holy people made holy by God himself. Yeah, with the believers are called the holy people. Uh, Onesimus. Onesimus is the one for whom Paul is writing this letter to Philemon. Uh, he was uh, the meaning. The meaning of his name itself is use, useful. Okay, a slave of Philemon in Colos, who did something wrong and ran away to Rome. Uh, he is also a convert of Paul. Then we have brother in the Lord, O me, your very self. These are the words of uh, Paul himself. So let us try to understand what is happening in this uh, lesson that we are trying to learn over here. So this letter was written in the 60s, 60s uh, AD. Uh, why was this letter written? We know that Onesimus was one of the slaves of Philemon. You know, slave culture was prominent at that time. Uh, rich people used, used to have slaves at their homes. And they were kind of very cruel and rude to these slaves. If they had committed a small mistake, they would even uh, have them killed. They would even take away their lives. So the, we're not clear about what Onesimus did that made uh, Philemon that angry. But Onesimus did something wrong in Philemon's sight that he had to flee. He had ran away from Colos towards Rome. Okay. So it was at Rome that uh, maybe in the prison that uh, uh, Onesimus heard the words, the gospel of uh, Jesus Christ, the life of Jesus Christ and Onesimus uh, turned himself towards Christ and he must have gone and uh, testified himself to Paul saying that this is what is happening in his life. And Paul himself who knows Philemon is ready to write uh, uh, for Onesimus asking forgiveness for Onesimus. He is standing as a peacemaker between Onesimus and Paul, uh, sorry Onesimus and Philemon. So we get to read what is happening um, in in the in the letter itself, God opens Onesimus' heart. That is why he uh, goes to Paul and he confesses what is wrong, what happened. And Paul is ready to write for Onesimus towards Philemon. And uh, it's not an easy thing, okay? Especially two things have to be done. One is personally to get forgiveness from Philemon for Onesimus. Second thing is slavery being a very prominent culture in those times. Paul is saying, asking him, do not consider uh, Onesimus as a slave anymore. He's a brother to take away slavery. Even today, dear children, many people are under slavery in different parts of the world. There are different moments, moments like uh, end slavery movement. Uh, no more slavery movement and all that in today's world. People are trying to uh, fight for those. So Paul's letter to Philemon 
exemplifies the whole ministry of uh, Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus Christ, when he was uh, hung on the cross for us, yeah, for us, he died on the cross, okay, to pay for our debts, for whatever we did wrong, Jesus uh, took it upon himself and he died on the cross. So when he was even on the cross, when he was being stabbed by the spear, the prayer that came out of his mouth is, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Even while suffering so much pain, he's asking his God, his Father God, Abba, Father, please forgive them because they do not know what they're doing. Such words of forgiveness. It's very, it's, it's sometimes easy to for, forgive, but to forget to erase it from our memory. That is what Paul is asking Philemon to do for Onesimus. Don't just accept him, forgive and accept him as a slave again. But you have to accept him as your own brother. So Paul offers to Philemon to charge Onesimus' debt to Paul's account. Okay, to Paul's account, on my account. Okay, how many of us are ready to forgive others? Or stand as peacemakers for our friends or anything wrong that has happened between others. Dear children, Jesus clearly says that when we come to worship, we must settle all our hard feelings with others and come in peace. Gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 5 verses 23 and 24. This is what Jesus says. He says, if when we come to worship, when we come to worship God, we must settle all our hard feelings with others and come in peace. Even in the Lord's Prayer, it says, Forgive our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Such a meaningful prayer. Are we able to follow it? Dear children, this is the message that the letter to Philemon gives us. It's not only really a personal letter. It is a letter to everybody who is holding a grudge against someone. It is a very important attribute of Christian life, forgiveness. If there's no forgiveness, there cannot be love. There is no love. There is no Christianity. So dear children, I want you to forgive and forget. If somebody has done something wrong, even in the future days ahead, when you grow up, there will be problems and there might be somebody who does something wrong to you or there will be some times where you do something wrong to somebody. Do not hesitate to go and ask forgiveness. Sort out your problems before you go and worship God. In, in week two, we have a person it's written as a true believer of forgiveness. We know uh, the Catholic head is called as a is called as a Pope. Yeah, Pope John Paul II, who reigned from 1920 to 2005. He lived during that age, and uh, he was one of the a very great Pope. Okay, he was he was very uh, passionate uh, for God to help others to find God and everything. But one time. Uh, there was a time where he entered into a mosque, okay? It's uh, called the Umayyad Mosque in Damascus, Syria. It's It was once a church, Byzantine church. Later it was captured. Uh, and he went there and he prayed and he spoke to them. He also went to Israel and he said that uh, you, we remember the great Holocaust that happened. Many Jews were killed by Hitler and all those regimes. So John Paul, uh, Pope, went there. And he asked for forgiveness. All these were very important. But the main thing that happened in his life was, in 1981, there was a man who tried to assassinate John uh, John Paul II uh, Pope. Okay, He was tried to kill, he was a gunman. He tried to kill uh, uh, Pope. And uh, somehow, John Paul, uh, he was able to, uh, came out of all that because, he had a shot, but uh, he was rescued. Later on, there was a nun and many others who uh, held this gunman and he was sent into imprisonment. He was in jail for many years. When John Paul uh, II, the Pope, uh, got better with his health, you know, for on a Christmas time, he went uh, to the prison and he went and spoke with uh, this man. His name is Akka. Akka. Uh, was the gunman okay so he went and spoke to him he, he said that he wouldn't say what they spoke but this that this is what he said uh he is forgiven whatever has happened and uh Akka was released till the day that pope john paul died 
okay, not killed, died. They were very good friends. Akka used to come and visit Bob once in every time. Akka's life had changed from bitterness to from hatred to peace and in love. That's what forgiveness done, uh, does. That is why humanity, when they were so, so ill with hatred, with all, all such pain and everything, Jesus came down for us. He came down, he gave his life and he rose again. And we're waiting for him yet another time to come back and to help us. Okay, so dear children, it is important to forgive and to forget. Let us look at the memory verses given to us. The first one is Paul's letter to the Ephesians chapter 4 verses 32. Ephesians 4, 32. This is what it says. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other. Just as in Christ, God forgave you. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ, God forgave you. We have one more in week two. Paul's letter to the Colossians, chapter 3, verse 13. Colossians 3, 13. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. Forgive as the Lord forgive you. One more time. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. Let us close our eyes. Let us uh, close our class today with the word of prayer. Let us ask Jesus to forgive us if we've done something wrong. And uh, let us be able to forgive others if somebody has done something wrong with us. Only then can we go for true worship. That's what St. Matthew says. Let's close our eyes. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for teaching us what forgiveness is. It is not only important that we forgive, Lord, but also forget. Thank you for teaching us this valuable lesson from the life of Philemon, Onesimus and Paul. Lord, at times we have to take up the role as Paul did to become peacemakers. At times we have become Philemon. Lord, help us to forgive. At times we have become Onesimus. Help us to ask sorry, O Lord. O Lord, we pray for all the children, O Lord. Thank you for teaching us this valuable lesson. Help us to use it in our daily life. All of this we ask in the more, most precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. See you next week.